Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Um, let's begin, though, with the tax credits. Have you done the sums yet? I wanted to uh, do it on air. I, I, was, I was toying with the idea, because the calculator is already in place, the calculator with which you can work out whether or not you're going to be worse off come December uh, when tax credits are cut. For working people, remember that ludicrous rhetoric? I said at the time it was so patronising, but then you begin to feel pompous when you call something patronising and see loads of other people fall for it. Said at the time, this narrative of hard-working families was absolutely bogus. The hardest-working families, in my humble opinion, are the ones with the least, not the ones with the most. You always get that. Usually on the school fees debate together, isn't it? And people say, well, I work very hard to send my children to private school. I say, I don't think you work as hard as a, you know, a minimum wage coal miner. Coal miner, probably not the best example to choose, but, but you see what I mean. In terms of getting yourself through the day, the knowledge, the size of the reward at the end of it, it's a huge factor in how stressed and stretched you feel. So it was never going to be the case that hard-working families got rewarded by a Conservative government. That poor woman on Question Time last week, who'd effectively voted for the Conservatives and broke down in tears while relating how much worse off she was going to be as a result of this specific policy, okay, this specific policy, which was put together by Gordon Brown to effectively shuffle tax money around and meet the shortfall in wages that employers were failing to meet. I, I Listen, seven minutes after ten, if you're new to the programme, then please don't think it's anything like the Beeb or, or, or other radio stations you might have listened to, where we presume what we say is gospel. I'm giving you my understanding of tax credits, and I've probably, quite possibly, already made a mistake. The way, the way this show works, you ring in and tell me what I've got wrong. 0345 6060 But it's, it, it's fairly clear, isn't it, that George, George Gordon Brown envisaged tax credits being there to make sure that you could actually earn a decent crust despite the fact that your boss wasn't paying you one. And, and that was, I mean, that's wrong on every level. But that was part of the new Labour deal with business, wasn't it? it that, that, that notion of we were so desperate not to be seen as anti-business, and this is now pure analysis, again, open completely to uh, your criticism and dismantling. But that seems to me to be the very essence of everything that was rotten at the heart of Tony Blair's relationship with business, because what tax credits effectively did was say, look, you, you don't have to pay them enough to live on. We'll, we'll make you, you, you pay them what you want, OK? You pay them what you want. You pay them what you can get away with, supermarket owners. You know, you pay them what you can get away with. We'll make up the difference. Now, I think Gordon Brown, for all his faults, was a well-meaning soul, and I can see what he, what, he, what he hoped to achieve by doing this. It possibly would have been too difficult to turn around to employers and insist that they actually pay their staff, their hard-working, poorly-paid staff, enough to live on. But rather than pick a fight with the employers, he had a look at the tax take and decided he could shuffle things around a bit and essentially take a few quid off Peter to pay Paul and let the employers off the hook. That's astonishing, isn't it? And that was Gordon Brown. That wasn't George Osborne. It was so we should really have noticed at the time that he was in letting employers off the hook by making up the shortfall in what people were being paid and what they needed essentially to survive. So, again, trying to park any party politics at the door. It's Gordon Brown's the architect of this mess, but George Osborne's attempts to fix it are what we're discussing today. I think we can all agree something needs to give, something needs to be fixed. You can't sustain a situation where business is delivering dividends to shareholders, bonuses to executives and seven-figure salaries to their top head honchos should actually have the wages topped up by government that they pay to their most poorly paid staff. I mean, it's, it's absolutely rancid on every imaginable level. But we missed it. I don't know why we missed it. Maybe because didn't really think the Labour Party would be sucking up quite so violently to commercial interests. But anyway, we missed it, and it happened, and now it's embedded in many families' economic arrangements. It's embedded. It's the deal that they sign up for. It is absolutely the way they get through every week and every month. But it's going to leave some of them worse off. People with jobs. 
People with jobs on the lowest wages currently paid in this country will be worse off under tax credits. Now, I often have uh, heated debates with people who were su su completely successfully persuaded by the narrative of worker versus shirker, completely failed in the run-up to the general election to persuade a lot of people who listen to this programme that we were all being lied to. I take no pleasure whatsoever in being proved right. Uh, I absolutely swear to you, if you swallow the narrative that all unemployed people are feckless work shy layabouts, next on the list will be people who are employed but not paid very much. And lo and behold, within 10 minutes of getting back into Downing Street, they're announcing a cut in tax credits that they explicitly and categorically ruled out during the election campaign. If that's not the definition of barefaced lies, frankly, I don't know what is. But the reason I mention people who swallowed the narrative of worker versus shirker is because I wonder if, like the woman in the Question Time audience on Thursday night, you find yourself looking at George Osborne's proposals to make the poorest paid people, some of the poorest paid people in the country, worse off than they are today, and think, mate, this is awful. This is so bad. Or can you justify the policy? Can you explain your support for it? 0345 three is the number that you need and don't forget this is this is an attempt in a way to leave i got a lovely message off of uh, a listener yesterday i got a lovely email accusing me of all sorts of hypocrisy and bias because sometimes uh, i argue from a left-wing perspective and sometimes i argue from a right-wing perspective this but, but makes me an appalling hypocrite and uh, biased presenter according to dave the gunner i had to reply and say that's one of the nicest compliments i've ever been paid are you really hearing someone who tries to base his opinions upon the facts that change and therefore can't be predicted to come down squarely on the labor side or squarely on the tory side i'm fairly predictable when it comes to opposing racism and homophobia but on everything else it's all up for grabs I said to you yesterday eu grammar schools uh, even assisted dying some of the biggest issues of our day I, i'm confused about and I'm not confused about tax credits. I don't see how anyone can justify taking money away from the poorest paid members of the workforce. How big a clangor has George Osborne dropped? And if you are, like that woman in the Question Time audience, a true blue, a Tory voter, do you see this like the poll tax? And indeed, like the uh, recently arrived MP for South Cambridge, Heidi Allen sees it as an actual affront to your party's values. Tax credit cuts, how... How bad has Osborne, how badly has Osborne behaved? We'll start with Peter, who's in North Yorkshire. Peter, what would you like to say? Good morning, James. Hello. Full disclosure, I'm a Conservative Party member. That's right. um, I actually support the transition from where we are now to a new position. Um, the, whole the, the destination being what you support, the destination being when, when bosses are paying their staff enough to actually live on, as opposed to the Treasury topping it up. Yes, um, I, I support I that destination have... as well. It's the journey to get there that I'm worried yeah. about. I think it is fair to say your analysis of the lady on question time, I think, is, is uh, with the greatest of respect, is flawed. Okay. Uh, a, a, she won't be um, affected because she won't actually. People have looked at her income and... Because okay, well, let, let's take the Conservative Party well, line that, that, that two that. out of ten families on tax credits will probably be worse off. That's, that's the official yeah. number that they've given. Talk to me about those yeah. two out of ten. Yeah, but she actually um, is an example of the mischief that has occurred. Which is why I want you to talk about the two out of ten families that even cabinet ministers have conceded will probably be worse off. Right, OK. There are a lot of people, uh, because of the way in which the tax credits regime works, there are a lot of people who have declared themselves self-employed and, and actually... I'm going to have to insist that you talk to me about the two out of ten families on tax credits in employment, not self-employed, who will be worse off under the cuts. How do you feel about that? Is that the price we pay for whatever this efficiency and destination you, you, you desire is? There will, there will inevitably be some people who, um, during the transition period, um, <laughs> are facing greater challenges than they are now. OK, let me just translate um, that. I, yes, I would, yes, James, I, it's fine. It's fine by me that the poorest paid families in the country get less by Christmas than they got before they voted. I think it's, uh, I think it's quite straightforward, actually. Yeah, I know because, you do. Because uh, although there will be some people who are worse off in the short term, the... As the economy grows and as the, the living wage grows, uh, so we will see, and, and also... Prove it. ...period of very low inflation... Pro prove and all it. ...of those things. So we will see prove people it. generally getting better off. Prove it. Yeah. Well, you can't prove the future. 
Well, then don't you know, mention I, I don't mention predictions then, because I, I, you can you can prove the future in the sense that they will be worse off. That's statistical fact. I can show you the sums, and your response yeah. to the sums is, "Oh, here's my crystal ball." As the economy grows and as people, <laughs> yeah, but but be fair. You've got a straight uh, face I, when you say this, haven't you? Um, actually, yes, I do. Good grief. Okay, so I give you sums and you give me crystal balls, and then you tell me that you can't predict the future. No, what I'm what I'm saying is that um, because of the measures that have already been put in place to increase from the minimum wage to the living wage, they're part of my sums. You know. It's not the living wage. It's uh, the national living wage is considerably higher than the figure George Osborne has put in place, and the, and the figure he's put in place is already part of the sums that leave two out of ten families on tax credits worse off. So I mean, you don't need to get your crystal ball out. You need to get your calculator out. Your sums are Equally, wrong. Equally, equally, go back to what I said at the outset. The economy's going to get better, and we'll all be right. better off. The destination is right, yeah, but where we need to be is making sure that we move to that destination in a way that resolves some of the conflict that's, it, that's emerging at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, and we... So we just in, in, in a sentence... It. No, the, 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 because it wasn't planned, no. James, if I may, it was not planned um, to support people who were uh, effectively... Uh, declaring themselves self-employed in the knowledge that they actually didn't have a proper business. But they come so off the unemployment the, figures, don't they? The, the, yeah, but that, that goes back... And the Conservatives keep boasting figures. about employment going up, but you've just told us that you think a large part of that number will be the people that you've just described. So, I mean, you're trying okay, to have your cake and eat it. Well, I'm afraid I'm only going to tell you the truth as, from what I see, because I work with unemployed people. A proportion of those people who've gone into self-employment simply do not have the income coming I, into their I, business. But I completely agree, Peter. I completely agree with you, which is why I've spent the last five years saying that the employment figures are a joke. But it's Ian Duncan Smith who keeps punting them out. So can we part in agreement on that, at least? Ian Duncan Smith is lying through his teeth when he tells us about the employment figures being a cause for celebration, because you know, you work with the unemployed people, and you know that they're not employed in any meaningful sense at all. Can we at least agree on that? Actually, the vast majority of people that we deal with get into proper paid work. But can I just <laughs> no, you on? can't, mate. I'm, I'm going to die laughing if I let you carry on. James O'Brien, weekdays 10 till 1 on LBC. 22 minutes after 10. It's, it's the honesty. I know it's a slightly silly quest to be on, just wanting a little bit of honesty, but Anita in Morden has managed to be honest. I, I find the position you describe, Anita, I find it repellent, but I, I really do applaud your honesty. I fully support the choice of tax credits. Yes, two out of ten families will be worse off, but that's the sacrifice that we have to make to get a flawed system fixed. I'm just cautiously wondering what sacrifice you think we have to make, unless you are one of those two out of ten families. Otherwise, I don't think you can use the word we. Can you to say we have to make a sacrifice? You say they have to be sacrificed so that we don't have to be any worse off. Well, obviously, obviously you need to balance the books. You start with the poorest people on them. Uh, it's the same if you get made redundant or if you become pregnant. Any life changes. Uh, you have to reevaluate your position and look at other opportunities. This is what life is about. They should be grateful they got this benefit for this long. In a few years it will get better. And, and that, as I say, and I know I sound a little bit facetious, but I do mean that I, I can deal with that honesty. It's the crud that you hear from Osborne and his acolytes and, and Cameron now saying, yes, look, things are very, very difficult and they might look horribly unfair, but don't worry, as long as we keep looking after the rich, everyone's going to get better off. I just don't see that happening. So when it comes to tax credits, it's not just people on the left lining up to protest against the apparent injustice of this policy. You've got Johnny Mercer, the new Conservative MP for Plymouth Moore View, saying yesterday, urging the Chancellor to do something, to do anything, to ease the harshest effects of the cuts on the vulnerable. He said he was expressing the extraordinary levels of feeling in his Devon constituency of Plymouth. Another new Tory MP, Heidi Allen, South Cambridgeshire, used her maiden speech to urge the Chancellor to reconsider the plans. If he did reconsider the plans. Would he look weak or strong to you? G genuine question. I think he'd look fantastic, but then he'd be doing what I want him to do. If, if you, like Anita in Morden, think that it's perfectly acceptable to take the poorest people in society and make them a little bit poorer for a while because, um, because it's the only way to get a flawed system fixed. If he, if he stepped back now and said, actually, maybe we shouldn't be hitting the 
the most vulnerable people the hardest, would you think less of him? Would anyone think less of George Osborne? Madeline's in Tunbridge Wells. Madeline, what would you like to say? Hello, James. Hi. After the last caller, I, forgive me if I've misunderstood the question. Um, so, whilst um, I'm more than happy to help the people, the lowest paid people, um, with tax credits, um, I think he should have waited until the minimum wage had come in to action. But it's, it's not the minimum wage, and the calculations of people being worse off include the wage increase that he's bringing in by law, that people are still going to be worse off. And, and okay. you, you see what he's pulled off there without you noticing? Yes, I do. Yeah, well, no, what? I understand what you're saying. What I would say is, because when I had this light bulb moment <laughs> yes. a couple of years ago, why the hell are we... Um, as taxpayers propping up fat cats. It, it was like, oh my God, look what's happening. So the people who are making the millions of the big companies yes. should be paying even more higher wages. Of course they should. And then the people on small businesses... I had the same. I had the same light bulb moment as you. Oh my God! There are people operating supermarket checkouts, having their wages topped up by the treasury, yeah. while the people running the supermarkets are walking away with seven-figure salaries. But do you know what I thought the light bulb would lead to, Madeline? The people with the seven-figure salaries getting paid a little bit less, having to pay a little bit more tax, and then the money being used to pay the people who were manning the checkouts in the supermarkets where they all worked. That's not what's happened. They've just taken the money off the people on the checkouts and told them to get lost. You heard the last fella. Just got to deal with it because one day they'll all be better off. Honest, I promise. Well, I this is this. I mean, this is how my train of thought is. So I've always thought that something has to be done. I'm more than happy to help out the people than the lowest wages, but maybe they need to tweak it more. Well, and that's what Frank Field is calling for. Frank Field is just calling for a tweak, if you will, to modify um, the plans and ease the burden on the lowest paid. Even Zach Goldsmith has signed up to that and the former minister, David Davis. All Conservatives. I'm really keen not to make this party political, despite old Peter in North Yorkshire's attempt to, to turn it very, very much into a party political broadcast. You can be UKIP, Tory, Labour, Lib Dem, Green. You can be anything and just think you don't fix a problem by hitting the most vulnerable people hardest. Yes, I, I agree. And also, also <laughs> sorry, I thought you were going to just go to someone else. But also, Certainly I think not, if, he, if George Osborne did change his mind, I would. I, I think that would be good, and I wouldn't hold it against him. No, well, but that's because he'd be doing what you wanted. I, I, I guess the question then becomes: if a significant majority of people think it should be done. Would he gain by doing it? You don't know, actually, whether he would, because people queue up to attack. And anyone who voted Conservative, who is now shocked to discover they're going to be worse off, deserves nothing but sympathy and understanding. They won't get it from most of the people on the left these days. Judging by social media, they'll get shouted at and screamed at. That serves you right for voting Tory, you evil mill-owning buffoon, or whatever the insult of the day may be. You, you, you won't get fellow feeling. It's all your fault. You shouldn't have voted Conservative. Oh, that's really helpful. Yeah, because lots of people are going to change their views. It's a bit like the idea that if you go up to Manchester and start spitting at a few Tories, they're going to join the Labour Party. Yet yeah, that's absolutely brilliant logic. Why did you, why did you change your vote? Because oh, I got spat at by some crusties in Manchester on my way to the Conservative Party conference. It made me realise the error of my ways. Plums. Bow's in slough. Bow, what would you like to say? Um, uh, hi there, James. Um... Basically, uh, I think what it is, is, uh, you know, the system needs to be sorted out anyway. And, uh, you know... Uh, you well, what, why? Which bit of the system needs to be sorted out? Yeah, well, the benefit system is uh, out, of, out of line anyway. We're not, we're, not, we're not talking about that. We're talking about working tax credits. Yeah, working tax credits... So what, 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 why is that out of line? What's wrong with working tax credits as they stand? What don't you like about them? Because, because basically, I mean... People working on seven pound an hour, right? And then things like that, you know, sort of, you, uh, you, you know, they're saying there's un unemployment is down, but people go out to work and then they're being topped up, you see. So basically, the wages are being topped up. But why? There shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a need to be topped up. Because right? they can't live on what they're getting paid. Yeah, but there shouldn't be a need to be topped up, you see. So they should be paid a lot more. 
Well, they, this is what they this this is what they're getting at, aren't they? They're saying that they're going to be paid more. So th- this is what it is. So they, they'll be. But they're going to be worse off after the sums have been done. I mean, this is the well, point. It's not just. It's not just. It's not the flipping Guardian or the Daily Mirror doing this. It's David Davis, a former Conservative Party leader. It's Zach Goldsmith, a Conservative candidate for mayor. It's Johnny Mercer, a new Tory MP in Plymouth. It's Heidi Allen, the new member for South Cambridgeshire. They're speaking to their constituents. Their constituents have done the sums. They work, and they will be worse off. How can that be fair? No, the thing is, you, you, they do the sums, right? Mm. Let everybody else do the sums. There's a lot of people, right? What they do, they purposely work like 16 hours a week. They purposely work a certain shift pattern, right? Because they, they know they're going to get the top-up benefits, right? And there's people out there, ex- example, minicab drivers. They're not showing the true figures. You see what I mean? They're no, I, 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 I think even if you are right, and I'm sure there's some truth in what you're saying, it's an utterly meaningless red herring in the context of the conversation that we're having. We're talking about people who work full-time, who have put their numbers into the calculator that's at the, uh, the uh, DWP website, and they have realised that by the time these two policies kick in, the made-up living wage, the Osborne pittance, which is not the national living wage, and the tax credit cuts, they're going to be worse off. And I don't think, and I'm sure you're most are pure, but I don't think banging on about minicab drivers taking the mickey is any help at all to them as they wonder how the hell they're going to buy school uniform for their kids next September. James O'Brien, weekdays 10 till 1 on LBC. 10.36 is the time and uh, many thanks to incorrigible FCA for a characteristically thorough account of some of the facts and statistics that lie behind the conversations that we're having. Only 25% of people on working tax credits are currently also on the minimum wage. So 75% of tax credit recipients will not be getting the pay rise, a relatively paltry pay rise, that George Osborne claims will alleviate the impact of tax credits being taken away, taken away from people like Tom in Wandsworth. James, this isn't going to only affect people who earn the lowest. I earn £26,000 a year. That's above the median wage. National weekly median wage now is £385, £9 less than the average weekly income pensioner not working now enjoys. Anyway, Tom, this isn't going to affect people who earn the lowest. I earn 26 grand, and the tax credits I get is how I afford taking my kids out occasionally, paying for their school trips. It's the money which keeps my family close to normal rather than poverty-stricken. It's a massive amount of money I'm going to lose, and there's no way in hell employers or my employer are going to give me a pay rise to the tune of £1,000 a year. A grand a year, worse off. Now, it, I, look, I'm not going to start covering myself in sackcloth and ashes, I'm closer to the politicians on this than I am to Tom in terms of what a thousand pounds means to me. But I have absolutely no problem whatsoever getting my head around the idea of a thousand pounds being the difference between, if you like, a a, a decent lifestyle and a penny-pinching one. And if you're earning the national average wage, I don't think it makes you a communist, does it, to suggest that that's wrong. Why can't George Osborne see that? 03456060973. If he stepped back from this now, as he's being urged to do, would he would he be a stronger or a weaker figure to you? If he actually put his hands up now, quite early, and said, yeah, you know, we've had a good look. We don't like it. John McDonnell, the shadow chancellor, put his hands up last week and said, we've had a good look. We've changed our minds about something. He got a kicking from the right-wing press, but I'll be interested to see how it plays with voters. If George Osborne changes his mind, would you think more of him or less? And what do you think about the fact that tax credit cuts are going to leave people like Tom a thousand pounds a year worse off, despite the fact he works full time? Jamie's in Manor Park. Jamie, what would you like to say? Yeah, hi. Good morning, James. Anyway. Yeah, I'd just like to draw draw attention to the fact that a lot, lot of people that have gained employment since since the big crash uh, back in two thousand and eight, uh, two thousand and seven, are actually self-employed. Yes. You know, like my wife, that, that they're, they're actually self-employed people. They're doing fun, like little jobs, like a bit of gardening, a bit of web design, a bit of this and a bit of that, just to keep things going. Now, these people... Get and, and to keep their names off the unemployment figures exactly. as well. Exactly. Yeah, good point, good point. Exactly, that's right. So, these people who do receive tax credits, like my wife, you know, she's, she's got a business up and running, but it's just not earning earning that kind of money. It's not. Uh, I think her income's something like 12... 12000 a year, yeah. uh, and then it's tapped up w- with the tax credit. These people aren't going to get the hourly increase. In, no, in of course the they're wage, not. Be- of course they're not. They're, they're having to get out there and earn their own money. And, it, it, you know, we're going to be hit really, really hard. I think it's shameful. 
I think it's utterly shameful. Again, they're picking on the vulnerable. It, it, it makes my well, voice shake. I can, hear, I can hear the emotion in your voice, and you know you've got a supporter in me, but, but if, if just for a moment to sort of step out of it and be objective, yeah. if I'm trying to imagine what it's like to be the, 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 the kind of conservative who thinks this is fine, and I think they'd say, well... You, you, we've created an unrealistic expectation. You, your, your wife should not be uh, living on more than she can earn. And I, 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 I'm trying, all right? And I think I would also say the free market... Well, well, we heard a caller, didn't we, earlier? The economy will get better soon, Jamie. Don't worry, and your wife will be fine. I think that was the message from Peter. OK, well, you know, what, what with the slowdown in China, economics is not a proven science, you know, it goes all over the place. You know, there could be a, another big crash. But I, I would just like to say the kind of work my wife also does, she actually works part-time for the council. She yes. does music, music and movement classes for, for young children. Now, if the council were to step up and employ her, give her a full-time contract rather than drapes and bits and, and they pieces. can't because there's a public sector pay freeze and councils are, uh, have been ordered to make billions of pounds worth of cuts well exactly and that's hit her again but she this is this is like an echo time. chamber mate uh, yeah, with the greatest of love and respect it's all very well us singing the same hymn to each other what we need to get our heads around is what other I, and I, I can get my head around the people who aren't going to be affected at all and don't really give a hoot about people like you callousness and an absence of empathy these are logical positions that I can understand I can understand people who are really really well off and just think you should sit there and wait for everything to get better. But loads and loads of people on low incomes voted Conservative. Are they all waking up now going, oh my God, what a terrible mistake did I make? Or, or are they still successfully persuaded that they're somehow not getting a kick in the ghoulies, even though they're bent double and howling in pain? I well, it's a mystery to me. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just, they had a very slick machine. The, the Conservatives, at the, during the election and the run-up to it, it was a very slick machine. It was a very well-run campaign, and they did present a very good image. But and they I convinced an awful lot of people that they were on the, the side of the workers, and now the workers are getting spanked. Yeah, and it's it's I know, and it's 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 catastrophic, and it's really sad, and it's 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 really difficult, and I think it's going to drive a if he if he carries on with if if he pulls this one through, a lot of people are going to be in genuine hardship, and it's going to drive people. I, I don't know, I don't know where it's going to drive. Well, people. nor do I, and I, and, I, and I dread to think. But then again, we we know where the last round of cuts drove people to. We drove them to food banks and payday loan companies, and that sort of callous right wing position of it all being their fault doesn't appear to be shaken you know i still hear occasionally people talk about flat screen televisions as evidence of the feckless work shy unemployed and people still use that line people who've clearly not gone out in the last 10 years and tried to buy a television that wasn't flat screen you can buy flat screen televisions in oxfam now actually you can't buy electrical goods in oxfam but you can certainly pick them up cheap on ebay um absolutely right as per tom your last texter please withhold my name in capital letters as another glimpse of what the future looks like people being ashamed to describe their own economic position it doesn't only affect those on minimum wage, James. I'm a single mother, working almost full-time. I'm earning more than the minimum wage, but barely keeping afloat. What do they think will happen to us whilst waiting for the situation to improve? I'll get deeper and deeper into debt and will never be able to catch up again. I'm watching my overdraft creep up every month and I'm going to bed with knots in my stomach, anticipating the month when I will not be able to meet my rent payment and how will I deal with the shame and distress that this will cause my children? These are real problems and real questions from real people. <sighs> Alan is in fleet. Alan, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hi. Uh, just preface, I've never claimed tax credits, never been eligible, always earned too much. Sure, same uh, here. What Osborne is doing, I think, you in your trailer you suggested, has he made a mistake, yeah. has he dropped a clanger? Those are the suggestions. I think a mistake means you there's unintended consequences of your action, so you've made a mistake. Yeah. I don't believe there are any unintended consequences. And this, this is purely intentional. This is deliberate. Either, best case scenario, he's got a disregard for what happens to people. Worst case scenario, he knows damn well what it's going to do, and he doesn't care. The slightly more charitable interpretation would be that he was prepared to expose some of these people to a degree of suffering, but he underestimated that degree and therefore could now backtrack with credit. If he backtracked, 
he might be able to spin the credit line. Well, why do you have to be so cynical? I mean, he's a, he's a father. He's, he's a, an intelligent, well-educated man. Maybe he just didn't realise that people like Name Withheld and people like Tom in Wandsworth, in fact, they're I mean, coming in thick and fast now, um, maybe he just doesn't realise the difference a £1,000 a year could make to people like that. He genuinely doesn't realise that a £1,000 can be the difference between head above water and going to bed every night worrying about the month around the corner when you won't be able to pay the rent. It's possible, James. You're a much, uh, much nicer person than I am, giving <laughs> the benefit of the doubt. But I personally, I having been that. a Tory in the past, yes. I was a Tory in the past. Oh, well, in that case, I, I am definitely a much ways. nicer person than you in that case. I saw the out of my ways <laughs> over the last, you know, ten years, and I've, I've, you know, and we've had a discussion about this in the past. And you just look at some, there's some good Tories about David Davis has always seemed like a nice chap. He seems to be there's lots reasonable. there's lots of nice Tories around and there's lots of nice Tory voters around and and it's me being a little bit lazy and and and, and silly and tribal and I suggest that it's evidence that you're not nice because y y you just get told stuff it doesn't make you evil for believing it I always say the people telling the lies are the problem not the people believing them people believing them will be a problem of a very different flavour but the people telling the lies are the ones that deserve all the ordure problem that Labour Party's made though for the last five years is is thinking that everyone is either needy greedy or irrelevant and and in a way we're doing it again now portraying these people as needy they shouldn't be needy if they're on more than the national average wage you shouldn't be needy if they're working full-time portraying them as needy means that you can somehow sort of step away oh yeah they're needy started off being the unemployed right remember when we were all turned against them still are still still works and then it'll be the kind of people who aren't working hard enough the people who are choosing to be better off on benefits so i only work x number yeah okay so then we got turned against people who were working a bit but not enough and now we're getting turned against people who are working full time what the hell have they done wrong on what possible planet of justice could you look at somebody working full time for a subsistence wage more than the minimum wage but a subsistence wage and say yeah you, you're getting too much I'll tell you the world in which that could happen, the world in which very, very rich people look at the amount of tax they pay and instead of thanking the Lord for the luck that has shone upon them, they actually dance the other way and start resenting the fact that they can't afford a bigger yacht. They've got to actually top up the wages of a supermarket checkout assistant. Hello, I'm Ian McKellen. I want you to join me in supporting crisis this Christmas. Times are tough. While we are safe and warm inside, thousands of homeless people will be sleeping on the freezing streets. For just £22, 29p, you can reserve a place for someone at crisis at Christmas. You'll give them food, clothes and safety, and the chance to move off the streets for good. So, please, go to crisis.org.uk and give £22, 29p to bring someone in from the cold. Thank you. James O'Brien, weekdays 10 till 1 on LBC. 10.52 is the time. Tax credits. I mean, we've heard one justification of the cuts that are coming, and that justification is these people... Well, I'll tell you what it actually translates as. No, look, these people are going to be worse off, but they're all too stupid to realise that they're actually be better off in the long run. Trust me, please, I'm a Chancellor. That's it. That's it. Every single time now you see someone from the Cabinet on telly explaining the economy to us, they're telling us that great times are just around the corner. And it's very important that poor people suck up some more suffering and misery because the really good times are right around the corner and we know that because the rich people are happier than they've ever been in this country at the moment, getting a better deal than ever before. What's not to like? As long as you keep every, every, all the rich people happy... The problem is, what does the word rich mean anymore? I'm rich, according to the sort of statistics, the averages, the percentages, way above the national average. I don't feel rich. <sighs> don't feel rich. But I can't quite imagine what it would be like for 20 quid a week to make a difference to my family's lifestyle. And that is the only charitable interpretation I've got of what the Chancellor is doing. Somehow, he can't quite imagine a world in which 20 quid a week is huge. And that's how we can see the removal of 20 quid a week from people for whom it is huge as somehow acceptable. And then, of course, you say, and don't worry, there's lots of apple pie and mother love just around the corner. You hang in there on your minus 20 quid a week income and you'll be all right in the long run. I promise. Trust me. I'm a chancellor. Anna's at Heathrow. Anna, what do you think? Hello, James. Hi. Hi. Um, I claim or have been claiming tax credits, um, but my claim is almost due to, to come to an end because... My children are just about to leave full-time education. Okay. Um, the system is flawed, I think, um, in that you can 
ring them up on an almost weekly basis and say, well, my earnings have changed, they've gone up, they've mm-hmm. gone down, and they alter your payment accordingly without really checking what you're saying is is true. Um, but my suggestion is that, that they um, implement any changes for new claimants only. Um, now, I think they're bringing in... It's a bit something. pulling the drawbridge up that, isn't it? No, I mean, they're bringing in something, I think, from after April 2017 that you can only make a claim for up to two children. Yes, and that's for true. Any, any people giving birth after April 2017... Um, but I think, I, won't the people who've currently got more than two children see the, get, get their credits cut accordingly? I, think, I don't think that's a... Well, not after tw- 2017. But anyway, yes. the other thing I'd like to say okay. is... As I am an existing claimant, I have heard nothing myself personally from the tax credit office to say how I'm going to be affected. So I really don't see how people can say, well, I'm going to lose this much. Because there's um, a calculator on the Department of Work and Pensions website. really unreliable, really unreliable. Well, when no, you, no, hang on a minute. You, you, I mean, when people are telling me that they're going to be worse off, they've used the calculator the government have given them. You, you're perfectly entitled to call it unreliable, but let's not express confusion at how people are working out whether they're going to be worse I, or better I off. I've used that in the past. I've used it 10 years ago, 15 years ago. To no, we, we, what I would the, the, to, there's a specific and calculator there. There's a specific calculator there. You put in your income and your current yeah. tax credit situation, it will tell you what your situation it's will be very after. Unreliable. But no, but, but hang on a minute, Anna. You're very unreliable. It wasn't there ten years ago. I'm claiming tax credits for about sixteen. Yeah, years. the calculator is there to calculate your financial situation after the new rules have been brought in. There is no earthly way the calculator that that does that could have been there before George Osborne was even Chancellor, let alone before he dreamt up the new rules. That's how people are working out whether they're going to be worse off or better off. 10.56, John's in Chiswick. John, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hello, mate. Um, I just want to make the point that if George, George Osborne really believed in his own rhetoric, then uh, as wages rise, the need to pay tax credits would gradually diminish. And so he could leave the current system in place, and as time goes by, it would just wither on the branch. <laughs> I, 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 I think you're onto something there, aren't you? Or, or he could... Well, why would wages rise voluntarily, though? Isn't that the problem well, with well, what? That's what, that's what he says. I mean, I'm, that's I'm what he's banking about, on. That wages I'm, will I'm go up. About believing his own rhetoric. Yes. If that's what he really believes, that the, the rise, in, the rise in wages is going to compensate for the loss in. Debt. So that's the argument. Yeah. And to anyone yeah, who yeah, says, just... "Sit still, be patient. I've looked at my crystal balls, and and everyone's going to be great in the future." So then you could just say, "Well, then why are you hurting them now? If everything's moving yeah. in the right direction, let's just, just leave the system." As time goes by, less and less people will need to claim it. And, you know, when, when the point, you know, in Nevada is reached, when everybody's now got uh, high enough wages yes. to be tax credit, then tax credit will... Uh, I love it. Would you mind if I nick that for future reference? No, do. Many, do, many do. thanks, John. That, that'll be passed off as my own thinking in the course of the next few weeks, no doubt. It's very straightforward. OK, OK, I believe you, George. Everything's getting better. Everything's rosy in the garden. There. Poor people are all going to be much better off very, very soon. So why bother taking their tax credits away now? Everything's moving in the right direction. Let's just wait until the national average income hits X and then no one will need tax credits anymore. Dave's in Surrey. Dave, what would you like to say? Well, I just have a theory, and I'd be keen to hear your opinion on it. I have a theory that um, tax credits actually subsidise large companies. So, it's not a theory, it's a fact. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. I mean, um, what, what I think is wrong is the fact that we're not enforcing a minimum wage at an earlier stage to, to counteract the lower... The, or the cut in tax um, credits. That's, but they that's bleated like about the minimum wage. They're bleating yeah, about the made-up paltry living wage, and they bleat about the national living wage. People on seven-figure salaries insist that they couldn't possibly run a profitable business if they had to pay their poorest-paid staff eight quid an hour. But, they're, but we're paying for them, then. So I know! Essentially, so essentially, our tax goes to subsidise these large companies paying sub, below living wage. And we have to... And then we, through our... You know, to our tax, have to because Walmart is a perfect example of this in the US, where I think ninety percent of their workers are on yeah. on some sort of benefit. And so we, I, I, I'm not against moving away from the tax credit system, but what I am against is this kind of flim flam. No, well, that's what they've done. They've used the simple fact that it feels wrong to see wages of massive companies topped up by the Treasury while the people running them are getting paid fortunes. That just feels wrong. That is wrong. 
but the solution <laughs> quotes is wrong as well and that, that seems to be where the debate has led and where some of these Tory MPs are finally waking up a little bit late but better late than never thank you Dave and Walmart I've no idea if this was one of those memes on social media that actually wasn't true but there were pictures around last year of Walmart having food donation points in its own stores for members of staff to donate food to other members of staff like a sort of massive public admission that we're paying people peanuts.